All right. 5.3, graphs of rational functions of the form ax plus b over cx plus d. So basically, it's two linear functions being divided. What happens here? The graphs of most rational functions of the form b over cx plus d and ax plus b over cx plus d have both a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. To sketch the graph of a rational function, you can use the domain, intercepts, equation of the asymptotes, and positive-negative intervals to sketch. So, rational functions of the form b over cx plus d have a vertical asymptote defined by x equals negative d over c, and a horizontal asymptote defined by y equals zero. So, for example, looking at this example here, you notice that there's a whole number in the top divided by some polynomial on the bottom. This whole number on the top can never, ever be zero. So, therefore, our horizontal asymptote is y equals zero. On the bottom, we have a restriction of x cannot equal three. Therefore, that restriction turns out to be a vertical asymptote. So, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals three and a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Again, because when you look at the numerator, the numerator can never ever be zero. Therefore, that's a value that that whole function can never be. All right. Now, most rational functions of the form f at x equals ax plus b over cx plus d have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative a over c and horizontal asymptote at a over c. Sorry, let's try that uh, this one up here, the vertical asymptote is at x equals negative d over c. Sorry, careful. Negative d over c, and the horizontal asymptote is y equals a over c. So, here's an example. So, looking at this example, the, horiz the vertical asymptote is going to be the restriction on the bottom, which is y equals 1 over 2. And, uh, sorry, x equals 1 over 2 x equals 1 over 2 is a restriction, not equal. So we make the equal part the equation of the vertical asymptote. Now the horizontal asymptote is actually the coefficients of the highest power, which is x in both the numerator and denominator, and divide those coefficients, and that will give you 2. The other way to do it is to do long division. Now, there's always an exception, and here there is also an exception. The exception occurs when the rational expression is not reduced. For example, give an example like this one. Is this function reduced? And the answer you should be saying is no. We need to state the restrictions, common factor, and notice that it gets cancelled, that x minus 2. So that x equals 2 is no longer a vertical asymptote, but it turns into a hole, a hole at 2, and results in a horizontal line at y equals 4, but at 2, 4, there is a hole. Okay? All right. Let's look at another problem. Example 1. You're asked to graph the function f at x equals x minus 1 over 2x minus 3 by determining the domain intercepts, asymptotes, and positive-negative intervals. You're also to describe where the graph function is increasing or decreasing. Also, we're going to look at the behaviors of the arrows, folks. So the behaviors around the asymptotes and the behaviors on either end. Think of it as end behaviors. We're discussing every single arrow on the actual graph. So, the domain is x belongs to real, such as s x does not equal 3 over 2. Why? Because, folks, up here, this is the restriction. So that is included in our domain. Next, intercepts. We have some intercepts here. That's too much work right now. Let's look at the intercepts. How do you calculate the inter uh, uh, intercepts? The intercepts are pretty simple and straightforward. How do you calculate them? Well... I know for a fact that when that function is equal to zero, that means the numerator is equal to zero. So if the numerator is zero, that means x must be one. 
So x is 1, y value is going to be 0, because the denominator does not have a 0 value as a number. Next, you also need to include the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals 0. So when you plug x equals 0, what's your y-intercept? Well, it turns out to be positive 1 over 3. That's your y-intercept. So we have an x and y-intercept that we can use to plot on our graph. Next, asymptotes. What are they? Well, there is a vertical asymptote at 3 over 2, and that's there because the restriction doesn't get canceled away. And we also have a horizontal asymptote because the degree of the numerator and the denominator have the same degree, so therefore there's a horizontal asymptote. We need to divide the numerator by the denominator, or, like again, you take the coefficients over here, and you end up with 1 over 2 as the horizontal asymptote. Let's look at the um, intervals, positive negative intervals. Remember from the previous unit, we use interval chart to describe the intervals, which ones are positive and which ones are negative. So how do we determine which intervals to choose? Well, it's based on the x-intercepts. In this case, we have one x-intercept, but don't forget, we also have a vertical asymptote. So our intervals are chosen based on the zeros and the vertical asymptote. From that, we pick points within that range, and then we plug in the value in the numerator and in the denominator to get a sign. Once we do that, we've determined the positive and negative intervals. Keep in mind, you're including the x-intercepts and the vertical asymptotes. Let's look at the graph. So what happens here is I just recopied everything smaller so that I include everything on the graph. All right, so we have our graph, we have our scale, we have our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Okay, Ugh. too much work there, folks. Don't worry, we'll go back slowly. So our vertical and horizontal asymptotes are as follows. There's a horizontal, a horizontal asymptote is at y equals a half. Our vertical asymptote is at uh, x equals 3 halves, so that's where they are. And now we're going to plot our x and y intercept. There's our x intercept, there's our y intercept. We know that the graph must be going like this based on those intercepts. What we don't know is what's going on on this side. We can assume it goes here, but you need to prove it. So my suggestion is that you plug in a point, let's say 2. Find out what the y value is. Turns out the y value ends up being 1, so we can plot that point. And then we can ensure that the graph goes in this direction. How do we do that? Well, we need to describe the decreasing and increasing intervals, and we'll also describe the... Um, all the different pieces. Okay, so this function is decreasing. It continuously decreases from negative infinity up to this value, 3 halves, and it continues to decrease on this side from negative 3 halves all the way up to, uh, sorry, 3 halves all the way up to positive infinity. So, when x goes from negative, three, negative infinity to 3 halves, and again from 3 halves to infinity. Now, describing n behaviors and behaviors around the asymptotes. n behavior, as x approaches negative infinity, y is approaching something. What is it approaching? So, we could use a test point. Let's say x equals negative 1,000 as our test point. So there's a lot of writing there. Let's get rid of that writing for a second. So, you could use a test point of negative 1,000. What that does is when you say, okay, I'm going to plug in a value of negative 1,000 into the function, and what do I get? Well, you'll get a number that is slightly lower than this value right here. Slightly lower than this asymptote right here. This asymptote is a half. So the answer that you'll get is slightly lower than that. So let's say negative uh, 0.4999999 as an example. So it's going to be just, not negative, but just underneath it. So as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches, okay, y approaches a half. All right, that's the value that we got, a half. But from which side? Well, 
if you remember correctly, it approaches it from the negative side, the below side. Then we have as x approaches 3 halves on the negative. So that means as x approaches, like looking here, we're looking how the graph approaches this asymptote from the negative side, and we find out that y approaches the value of y approaches the value of negative infinity. So as it gets closer and closer to this line right here, folks, the function goes more and more lower and lower. As x approaches now 3 halves from the positive side, what are we looking at? Well, folks, we're looking at that y approaches. Now look, looking up here, what is y approach? y approaches positive infinity positive infinity. And then as x approaches positive infinity, what's going on there? Well, as x approaches positive infinity, we're looking over here, folks. This goes, approaches, y approaches one half, but from which side, if you look carefully, it approaches one half from the upper side, the positive side. All right, and let's see what else we have here. That's, uh, that's the end of the video, folks. All right, then. Have a good night. Take care.